Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host, UK Kachidori. Hi there, and welcome back to another very special episode today. Uh, with me is a dear friend of mine from Ireland, Paul Clark. Now, before I introduce Paul, let me ask you a simple question. Are you frustrated with your own performance or your team's performance? Or do you find yourself wishing there was a better way for you to reach your goals? You know very well that peak performance is our natural state of being. Well. You don't need to worry anymore because Paul has figured out what works in the world of business when it comes to peak performance. Paul, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. You okay? It's good to see you. How are you? I'm very good, man. I'm very good. How's Ireland today? <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's sunny and uh, that's a rare event. So it's, uh, it's all good. It makes me smile anyway. Awesome. Before we dive deep, for those who don't know, for you to share who you are, you have a special formula that you often talk about when you are addressing people in your speaking, in your writings, and uh, that is performance equal capabilities multiplied by ability. Talk to us about that very briefly. Yeah, that you can, thanks. That forms, I guess, the, the foundation stone of everything that I do in, in terms of explaining to people and, and helping them understand my key unique differentiators. So as I see it, um, everyone's, you know, if we take you as an example, there you have a high level of capability as a broadcaster. There's probably not a huge pile that I can teach you or I'm going to teach you about that. Um, however, as I see across the board, across a lot of entrepreneurs, small business owners, startup owners, the typical people that I work with, they have a challenged ability to access that capability. So if we look at the capability as their what, their ability is their how. And as I call it, it's their performability. And it effectively acts as either an accelerator or a governor for their capability. So what do I mean by that? So very, very, very simple. If I say to you today, UK, how do you feel? You say a lot of people, 80% and upwards, my research will say, yeah, I feel not bad or I feel okay. And we say, okay, can you give me a rating of that out of 10? 10 being it was never better, one being it was never worse. So people tend to land in between five and six. It's actually 5.4 is the average. So... If you're a person of high capability, an entrepreneur operating at eight or nine out of 10 in terms of capability, that's never going to shine through because your ability to access that is only at five or six. And that acts as the governor for your overall performance. Now, we're human beings. On a day-to-day -day basis, we fluctuate and that's normal and that's natural. However, I extrapolate this losing the compound effect, if you like, over weeks, months, years. Right. So that's how people tend to get frustrated with their performance because they, they think, God, you know, I've, I've got a really high level of capability and, and it's just not happening for me. And in effect, what they're doing is they're spinning their wheels. They begin to drive with their accelerator on the foot and brake at the same time. And like doing that in the muck, the more you do that, the more you sink in the muck and the more <laughs> your performance suffers. So even though you're trying really, really hard, it becomes de-energizing, deflating, and demotivating. And that's when people tend to come to me for help. Indeed. You know, uh, for those who haven't started uh, following you and who are keen on knowing who you are, give sure. us a snapshot of where you've been. I know you used to help people in sports. Maybe you still do. Give us yeah. uh, what's been happening since uh, maybe uh, 12 years ago now. Yeah, um, probably about 12 years ago, I left my career with Diageo, uh, drinks company, a drinks giant, working in premium brand sales. So after that, I set out in business on my own. Um, in the meantime, I've opened four businesses. The business that I set up at the time called Matchfit was a sports or is a sports performance consultancy where we effectively work with teams, clubs and athletes to help them integrate all the elements of performance that may exist in silos presently. Um, so that kind of offered me and along with my own kind of sports coaching career, offered me insights into performance and led me to ask an awful lot of questions about it, basically, because I was, I was high on questions, low on answers. And mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was around kind of doing a deep dive into performance and saying, okay, hang on, why are performances so up and down? What's happening there? Where, why, what's the real reason behind this? So as we may talk about later on, 
basically performance is highly correlated with your readiness, your readiness to perform and, and how you go about that. Right. So when I take look at the world of business, I could see people having a lot more frustrations and pain than was happening in sport because they didn't understand that piece around readiness to perform. Why? Because I guess what's prevalent right now is working on your capability, upskilling, doing training courses based on capability. And we see this a lot of time with sales teams that do a huge amount of work on prospecting, <laughs> closing, negotiation, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But if we were to look at those guys and girls through the lens of being a corporate athlete or a sales athlete, to coin a phrase, we quickly understand that the piece that gets ignored is the piece before that. It's the readiness to perform because right. A lot of the time, they're quite able, as I said, quite capable people. But there's a governor there in place that's almost invisible to them. That is the is is the is the the root cause of their frustration because they can't see it, they can feel it, but they can't see it and they can't identify it. And because they can't articulate it, quite quickly that you know that demotivation comes about. Now, for companies and businesses, that can manifest in a number of ways. Obviously, falling and dipping performance is one. But then the frustration part manifests and people talent exits out of the business because people don't understand it and they think, you know what, I'm going to go somewhere else. But they keep job hopping and the problem keeps following. It does, yes. And it's just this downward spiral for the individual. And the problem then is you compound those all those individuals within a workplace team. That then overlaps onto the business performance, which means you know, we, we, we can have a lot of problems and hence there's a lot of businesses, as I said, running very fast to stand still. Indeed, indeed. One of the things I've noticed even in my own life is uh, we have the knowledge that we can do more and become more and even perform it at the highest level, but oftentimes we fail to do that and the level of frustration from that, you know, it's like, you know, what do I need to do? And that's uh, where you talk about the five S's, you know, of peak performance. And we love to talk about those five S's. What is it that drives peak performance? And one of the things uh, that uh, you talk about is stress. Can we go over the uh, five S's of uh, personal peak performance? Sure, okay, okay. So the, the five S are the, the principles of peak performance, as I see it, that the bedrock habits, the bedrock lifestyle habits and people for, for everybody, not just athletes, um, that I guess support people's performance levels. So they're, they're a constituent part and they've performed the, the, the cornerstone of my, my solution called Nine to Thrive. So the five S is just to mention the first off, you said the first one there, stress, then we have sleep, staying active, sustenance, and finally, psychology. So psychology obviously doesn't begin with an S, but we just use some wordplay here for that. <laughs> yes. um, so the first one up there, if you say stress, stress is a really interesting topic, a really interesting subject. Um, it tends to be talked about in the binary in terms of lots of or none of, but the reality is, is that stress, if we view it through another lens, is actually useful and good. Um, we need it in our lives, especially as high performers. We need to be able to deal with these stressful times and indeed bring ourselves to the red zone or the edge of the red zone. The problem in everyday business life is that too many people are living on the edge of or in the red zone <laughs> all day, every day. They don't have this balance in their lives. So if you take the, the other world in which I, I reside, I work in, the world of, say, sport, athletes, footballers, etc., you would never, you, you would be aghast if you taught the players on your favorite football team were training eight or nine or 10 hours a day, every day, not taking rest, not taking breaks, and then going out and trying to perform on a Saturday. You'd be aghast as you paid your 30 pounds in to see them and you kind of go, <laughs> what's going on here? You just, you couldn't handle it. You couldn't accept it. Yet we, we do this in business. Now, there's nothing wrong with hard work. Your listeners will know that, they'll accept that, they'll fully buy into that. However, what we need to be able to do is not so much reside all the time in fight or flight. We need some time and feed and breathe or rest and digest state, for want of a better phrase. But however, as I said, we're spending way, way too much time in fight or flight. We're, we're living on cortisol, stress hormone. That's carrying it over into our nighttime, which we'll talk about in sleep. And so the cycle continues, but it continues downwards. So all I, what I espouse there in terms of stress, and when we do the, our lifestyle assessment on people based on their own physiology, so the solution is individualized, we're able to show them their stress levels across the day. We're not trying to get rid of it for them or anything like that because they could have a very you know, high-performing role or high-performing career. But what we're trying to advise them is 
is to show them and trying to investigate are there pockets within the day where we can take 10, 15 minutes to strike some balance. So we have that restorative period, that period of restoration, recovery, recuperation, so that we can kind of come back down into the valley and then go again and be ready to go again. So over a period of time, what we try to do then is instead of your week coming like this, where your body resource battery is going downwards, we try to have it at worst flatlining and at best coming into Thursday where you're still full of beans. Because in my experience, as having done this with hundreds of people, the vast, vast majority of people in the UK are wasted by about 11 a.m. on a Thursday. <laughs> now, as part of the working week, that's huge. You know, if you extrapolate that across even a small team of six to eight people in a, in a startup business, that's massive. It's a massive percentage of the week. So they're physically present, but the output is just not there. And go back to my equation, they're highly capable, but because their ability has dropped so much, that is, is the governor on their capability and then on their overall performance and on the results of the business. So it's vital that people, I guess, get a handle on it and begin to understand what stress means to them, where their most stressful events are, where they can find pockets of balance during the day. Now, again, I'm not talking about the need to go off and do yoga classes during the day or Zen classes or anything like that. I'm just talking about small periods within the day where they can find five, 10 minutes just to switch off. They might go for a walk. They might pick up a book. They might listen to some music, just walk away from the desk, have a conversation, something just to release that tension, get them out of fight or flight, get them into feed and breed, rest and digest state. And they're able to go again, able to go again, able to go again. Indeed. And that then, when the, when the end of their day comes, they're far, they've seen, they look back having been far more productive and feeling better about their personal life that evening, which is massively important. Incredible. I found, you know, even in my own life that when I take those 10 to 15, sometimes I take half an hour, is when I come back, I'm more focused, I'm even more sharp, uh, you know, going after something that I've been trying to solve together. And this takes intentional because sometimes you've got so many things uh, that need your attention you really have to be deliberate and intentional to say, no, it is time for me to take a break and uh, focus on something that is going to uh, reduce the level of stress that I'm going. Because if you, you know, for business owners like me out there, you know, sometimes the temptation is to, if I don't do this, you know, the things are going to fall down. Yeah, no, if you sure. are in that place, it means you need to restructure how you're doing and really focus on delegation and identify those things that truly requires you because not everything in your business requires you uh, you just need to identify three or four key areas that you absolutely have to be engaged uh, you know and let others do this in fact you'd be surprised like I have uh, that you end up having some amazing people who outdo what you're doing and that is okay uh, you know course, that happens as well. surround yourself with smart people or smarter people as I say Absolutely. Talk to me about sleep, because that's an important part of the whole success equation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I kind of have the saying, UK, that I believe success, personal success happens between 9 and 5, but it's more 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. Now, maybe not exactly that, but I th really what I mean by that is, is that historically, I mean, it's, it's probably no surprise. It's quite obvious to people, but again, it's hiding in the wide open that when you focus on your rest, your rest restoration and your recovery, you tend to perform better the next day, not even tend to, you do on an ongoing basis. However, because we live in an always on world, now it doesn't mean that we're always working late at night, but we always have phones or devices in our hands. We're all guilty. I did it myself on Sunday. I was watching a football game on TV and, and I was kind of watching it on Twitter at the same time. <laughs> you know, this, this multitasking thing that we think we can do and we can't do. So, where, where, where that interferes with our sleep is, is dual. As I said there, we, we kind of leave the office, we leave our workplace, and then we kind of go home still triggered. We might do some emails just to catch up, get ahead for tomorrow, that kind of thing. <laughs> we're doing a little bit of cheeky reading in bed of a report just to stay ahead or something like that or catch up. And that's, that's you know, it's, it, that's become normalized or we're, we're, we're on the phone too much. The problem there is, and I can I, I show this to people by virtue of the, the, the assessment that I do that's personal to them on their sleep. We analyze their sleep. So we're able to show them that, yes, 
you may be getting a lot of the time the right quantity of sleep between seven and eight hours, but the quality within that quantity is not sufficient. So what do I mean by that? The quality of rest, recovery and recuperation within your seven to eight hours is just not enough because you're going to bed quite triggered. Now, what, what showed me this many, many years ago was with young footballers. When we did this first with them, they were getting to bed. They couldn't understand why they were always tired. And then the performance would dip in training during the week. It was basically down to the fact that they were playing games half the night. They'd be, up, they'd be playing games from 8 p.m. to midnight, kind of War of the Worlds or some of these things, Minecraft or, you know, these, these games were quite involved. But right. we were able to see by their, physiologic, their physiology during their sleep that they were still triggered. In effect, in here, they were still playing the game and they weren't dipping down into that REM sleep, if you like. So if we bring that into the, the world of business, the effect is the exact same. And unfortunately, we, we tend to try and switch off maybe a couple of drinks every night, a couple of glasses of wine, which is no real harm. And, but on an ongoing basis, they too are detracting from our quality of rest, recovery, and recuperation during sleep hours. Now, on a one-off basis, again, it's not a huge deal, UK. But on an ongoing basis, it is because there's the compound effect comes into play. And the aggregate result is, again, by Thursday, we're, we're, we're washed up, basically. So the, the second S, the second principle of sleep, effectively what I do with that is, is actually show people how they're sleeping right now, their, their, their rate of rest, recovery and recuperation, and obviously the quantity of sleep that they're getting, and then try and plot a way forward for them so that they can, I guess, remove the handbrake that's in place, that's in place there, that's hindering their quality of sleep, change their habits pre-bedtime in the hour, hour and a half before bedtime. It, it doesn't mean, again, that they have to go off meditating or anything like that, but the reading might change from something work-related to something fiction-related. Put the phone away an hour before bedtime. Things like that, little details of that make a huge, huge difference. So it's the two or three or four little details that make the mat, the big difference then. And then we're able to show them then the difference that that makes over the period of time as well. Indeed. Are there any tools that people can use right now to help, uh, you know, monitor their own sleep and see how things uh, are working out and they can make, uh, you know, decisive decisions as to what they need to do? Yeah, I mean, I think... I think at the at the cheapest level, it's how they feel, um, how they how they feel when they wake up in the morning time. That that's that's probably the the best value one of all. Um, but I think like pre bedtime, you know, something that they can do, put into action right now, to tonight, tomorrow night, is to actually examine what they do in the ninety to one hundred and twenty minutes before they actually get into bed. What are they doing by way of kind of coming down to end their day rather than going up to end their day um working towards bedtime kind of bring yourself down so i think it's really a matter of looking at your devices am i on am i on the ipad all the time what am i doing what am i watching on tv is it very triggering is it very emotional what am i reading is it work-based or is it is it to do with my role my profession or is it just more kind of relaxing fiction kind of thing if you like so I think there's that. There's also, I mean, there are some tools that people can buy, like whoop bands, that kind of thing, um, which re require some investment. Um, they're, they're getting better all the time. Um, the tech that I use tends to be far more insightful. But I mean, as a, as a starting point for 10, what people can get through their Apple Watch or something like a whoop band will give them a decent insight into where they, where they stand right now. Indeed, I love that. And again, you know, uh, one of the things we talk about here is uh, start small and remember small habits compounds, you know, all these Absolutely. things that we are talking about. If you just take one step and you work on that over the next uh, week or so, you'll find it becomes part of your habit and it will reward you long term wise. Well, you, you know, one of the things you talk about uh, still under the five S's is uh, staying active, which is uh, sometimes a challenge in the world, especially here in the West. You know, you get up, yeah. go into your office uh, and back into, you know, back, back home. You know, talk to us about that. Yeah, I mean, at a, at, a, at a very deep level, we're moving beings, we're, 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 we're beings of locomotion, yet we, we've, we've learned quite quickly to stand still. Um, so if you look at kind of the average day, people sit in the car on the way to work, they sit on the bus, sit on the train, sit in the tube, maybe not the tube right now, but, <laughs> but generally, um, but they, they tend to sit, then they sit and work all day, then they sit on the way home, and then they sit on the couch at nighttime. Now, I'm not saying this is true for everybody but i mean research will show this 
that we're just not getting enough physical activity, what I call staying active to fit the, the 5S principles. So really what we do is, again, through the assessment that we do is we, we get an insight into people's activity levels through three lenses: their low, moderate and vigorous activity levels. And that's basically in line with what, what all the health organizations would recommend throughout your week, the amount of bouts of low, moderate and vigorous physical activity during the week. So we're able to show people based on the heart rate, based on the physiology, where they sat within that and how much activity they had in each of those zones personal to themselves across their week and people tend to be very very surprised um there's actually there's actually two things that i see um you see people underworking and you see people overworking um it's no surprise that people in the more i guess i suppose aggressive professions and i mean that in the best possible sense like sales tend to exercise almost too hard and too often <laughs> and they're kind of getting into burnout because they're not balancing that down with the right amount of sleep and their stress during the day is sky high so that eventually they're going to crash and burn and suffer from burnout the flip side of that is and a, a huge amount of people reside in this zone is that they're not getting enough physical activity again they're in this downward spiral because their day is quite stressful they're coming home quite tired they're kind of going oh no you know what i've got to do this email better get ahead of this for the meeting tomorrow etc etc no i'll go to the gym tomorrow but that tomorrow <laughs> becomes the next day it becomes next week it becomes next month it becomes yet next year and a huge amount of these people will say to me, oh, yeah, well, I've got a gym membership. I'm going to go, well, how often do you actually use it? <laughs> so there's, there's all these, there's these, these mind games at play. So the assessment that we do, again, based on the physiology is unique to them. It's individualized to them. So we're able to show them where they reside within, within, within the, the staying act of the physical activity levels, because nobody will disagree that they need an element of physical activity. In fact, they may not know what they need and we're able, I'm able to advise them on that based on their status right now, whether there's someone who's reasonably fit, who hasn't exercised in a while or whatever. But again, that the, the physical activity serves two purposes. It serves as a form of escape. So it gets them away from, from the work or the stressful environment. It gets them into the outdoors a lot of the time or into a, a kind of a more team or group setting in a, in a gymnasium. Um, that's number one. And then number two, because we're moving beings, we need to, we need, we need to be moving. We need to be, we need to be exercising ourselves on a regular basis so that A, everything begins to function properly, and that B, that we're using energy, that we're going to bed tired, but not completely flat. And that's the whole idea behind it. So it's like it's these these many, many purposes to the whole physical activity piece. So a lot of the people I work with tend to think that stress and the sleep piece are, are so much more important than the physical activity piece, the staying active piece, but they're not. The staying active piece still carries a huge weight. If we were to think of all these S's as like an old Swiss watch with all the cogwheels, if all the cogwheels aren't working, the watch doesn't work. Okay. So, you know, if we're if we're kind of really nailing the stress game and really you know hammering down on the sleep but the staying active piece isn't working it governs how well the watch runs that's just it um indeed. so it's it's a massively important part yeah, i know indeed well bill as you can tell there is a lot of things to digest and think things through however here's a simple thing as we always say here that uh, for you to get started, sometimes you just need to uh, get a coach to show you or to work with you, maybe for a short period of time, uh, and show you where some of the pitfalls that people often get to when they're trying to do these things. So if you want to get started, maybe you know, you've tried it before, but it hasn't worked, your stress level was high, you couldn't get enough sleep, or even you can't stay active and you just want somebody to guide you. I know Paul here has got some training that you can access or you can reach out to our team. We've got some amazing coaches who can assist you with that as well. And uh, I'm glad that you're here, uh, Bill. Uh, thanks uh, for joining us here. Let's let's go back to the maybe the last uh, two parts of the five S's we often talk about here. And one of them is sustenance and the other one is psychology. Which one do you want to start with? <laughs> Um, yeah, the, these two parts follow on from the first three S's, as you can, they're like the, they're natural follow on when people have these habits, because you don't like to throw too much of people at one time. That's right. You know, it's like, you know, we, we eat the elephant piece by piece, if you like. So we tackle the problem, the issue piece by piece. So once we've kind of bedded in with the first three S's, then we look at sustenance, which is a, another name for nutrition. And really what we're, 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 the lens that we're looking through there, UK, is to say, look at 
you know, you, you, you can't, you, you can't work your way out of a poor diet. It's just yeah, not possible. Right. <laughs> it's, um, you know, because I think we all eat on the run. Um, I think here in Ireland, certainly I've seen a survey, I think it was 23% of all the food consumed in Ireland right now is out of service stations. Wow. Now I'm not knocking service stations, but let's be honest, it probably doesn't have the highest nutritional content. Um, and again, on a one-off, it's no big deal. But if that's the kind of lifestyle that we have on the run, eating on the go, et cetera, number one is quite stressful because we're supposed to enjoy our meal, sit down, supposed to be convivial, et cetera. But number two, it's not fueling us properly. That's right. So we can have all the stress balance we want, great physical activity, really cool sleep. But if the fuel we're putting in to fuel this high performance engine isn't good enough, we're going to fall down. And again, it goes back to that cogwheel analogy. This is another important cogwheel. So really what I do, um, the, the, expertise, the expertise of access to it in my team, we put people um, in touch with these guys and again, use a personalized approach where we're not just kind of throwing things at them to say, oh, you should eat this, this and this. It's looking at where they are now and then staying a half step ahead of them, bringing them with us, not in a teacher pupil kind of way, but in a very much adult, adult kind of way. So we're talking with them, not at them if you like, so that over a period of time, people can adjust their habits a little by little by little by little. So over the, over the, over the longer term, that compounds into great effect. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody has to become, you know, these, these Instagram heroes of healthy eating. It just means that they got to make small, succinct, important changes across their day. That's, I guess, in, in parallel with what, what they've, the work they've done with their stress, their sleep, and their activity levels and that then starts to make the boat go a little bit faster indeed well if you want to know more about sustenance and your nutrition we did an, an amazing podcast with one of our guests you can look on our platform uh, where we talk about this i think it's an important part really what you put in your body decides how active you're going to be and I'm glad you, you tagged on that. And most importantly, the psychology of peak performance. This is one of the, uh, those areas that I absolutely love and I've spent quite a bit of time studying this. And I would love to hear your take on the key elements of psychology that truly decides how we're going to perform, be it in business or in life in general. Yeah, I think from my perspective, I mean, that that's talking about psychology we can get, get into really really deep waters here um which is kind of good but it, it, it'll, it'll make the conversation last hours but if just for the for the, the time in mind i think we look at psychology from a personal performance point of view if we just boil it down to self-talk and we kind of really look at then how do we treat ourselves and we kind of maybe come to understand quite quickly that you know if someone spoke to us the way that we talk to ourselves sometimes you know, there'd be an all out war, um, you know, and that's maybe as well to use another analogy, maybe we, we look after our cars a little bit better than we look after ourselves in here. So I think the default is to always kind of beat ourselves up, especially in the era of social media. And I'm not beating up social media, but we tend to compare ourselves a lot, a lot of the time unfavorably with what we see in, in glossy photographs and in glossy articles. Um, so we have all these things in place, but inside in our minds we just don't think we're good enough things like imposter syndrome um, negative self-talk you know low self-worth i'll never be good enough all of these kind of things so it's just going to help people get to grips with that and, and and bringing that to bringing that to i guess to the forefront a lot of people don't actually realize it because it's their default condition it's only when you kind of talk to people about it over a coffee and tease it out people kind of go yeah god you know what? i i do do that yeah i didn't realize i was doing that wow Equally well, then, in terms of from a psychological perspective, do people respond or react during the day? Because during our day, you know, things are going to go wrong or maybe not so right. Do we react to that or do we respond to that? Do we know how to respond to that? Do we know the difference between a reaction and a response? Um, you know, the, the reaction is born out of fixed mindset. The response is born out of growth mindset. So it's it's a... As I said, it's it's one of these lifelong learning things, but to actually kind of kickstart that for people and help them with that tends to very, very uh, tends to be, excuse me, a very valuable last piece of the jigsaw for people because really at that stage, then they're self-empowered. They're self-empowered in the lifestyle habits, but they're also self-empowered now in terms of driving themselves between their ears, which is often the piece that lets people down, especially highly capable people, because 
you know, probably from talking to lots and working with lots of these people, they may never quite think they're good enough. That's right. You know, we look at them and go, wow. But they're inside dying almost kind of thinking, oh, nothing's good enough. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. And it just really requires those conversations to help bring that to the forefront and help them get that out there, help them voice it, but then help them respond to it instead of reacting to it and trying to kind of, I guess, wrestle with the gorilla. Because when you wrestle with a gorilla, the gorilla decides when it's over, not you. So it's it's what we're trying to do there is get them away from that, that reactionary kind of thing and get them to more to a responsive thing where they kind of become a little bit detached from it step outside, look in and go, okay, you know what? Here's how I'm going to deal with this. Here's how I'm going to respond to this. It's not good or bad. It just is. This only has the meaning that I attach to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Paul, I've spoken to quite a few number of people here, including high performance themselves. You know, it is a common thing for people to doubt themselves. And, uh, you know, you, you know, if you can learn uh, to talk yourself into, yes, you are good at this. You perhaps have spent quite a number of years performing this, uh, working on this. Perhaps you have that. So having that mindset that you have what it takes, which you usually have, uh, you are going to perform even better. You know, we're just looking at it that way. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We talked about stress. It's very simple sleep, uh, you know, staying active and make sure you eat well. And of course, how you're going to uh, nature your mindset and have this amazing self-talk and we you can learn more by visiting a Paul's website where can people find you by the way Paul yeah the best place you guys is first off first stop is the website that's connectperformance.ie um, after that I'm all over social media so LinkedIn is a place where I hang out quite a bit so if they look at me there Paul Clark I think the handle there is Paul Clark perform that'll get you direct to me um, on Twitter, it's at Connect Perform. Somebody else stole Connect Performance, so I had to go with that. Um, Facebook, then Connect Performance uh, page, and Instagram, the same there as well. So any of those places there, they'll find me. As I said, probably the, the place with the, the, the bulk of information is LinkedIn and the website. Indeed, and we'll put uh, all those places under this recording so you can access that as well. Look, we want you to enjoy life and, uh, you know, by performing at your highest possible level, having all the sleep, you're staying active and having all the things that we talked about, you are going to enjoy more and you are going to help as many people as you possibly can. In fact, you'll be a contributor rather than a problem in the society. So I want you to go back and listen to this recording. Paul and I have touched on a lot of areas that I think when you take time, even just uh, focus on one aspect of what we've talked about for a week and you focus on another one, on another one, on another one, by the end of the year, you will find yourself in a better place than you are today. So I want to encourage you, go back, listen to it. If you've got any questions, shoot a message to Paul or reach out to our team. We'll be uh, here to support you. We believe in you. We know truly that uh, every success leaves a clue. And today, Paul has been sharing some of the clues that you can follow to your success and perform very highly or to help your team perform uh, at the peak performance indeed. Paul, once again, thank you so much for being here on the show with us today. You guys really enjoyed it, thank you. Love to have you back sometime soon, man. Uh, thanks for being generous with your knowledge indeed. No problem at all. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have some training programs all over the internet that if you want to know how to start your own podcast, you can reach out to our team. Uh, I've created a training program which is based on seven years of doing this, uh, where I show you how to start to scale and even to monetize your podcast. There is a training available for you and many other training programs that we have put together or some of our guests have put together, especially for you. Until next time, live well, live with with passion know that the best is truly yet to come and goodbye for now thank you for listening to ukai business show we will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts want more check out www.ukaibusinessshow.com get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com quote wos18 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com 